Hello, I'm Kelly Murray. I'm the Chief Engagement Officer at the Consortium for Service Innovation. Welcome and thank you for being here. The Consortium is a not-for-profit think tank made up of about 70 member companies. And together we are the caretakers of the KCS methodology, um, along with other models focused on reimagining the way we work together. It is uh, probably not a surprise that AI has really influenced a lot of the conversations recently about the way that we work together, um, and especially over the last few months. Um, members of the consortium have been very generous with sharing their approach on the changing technology landscape. And you can find public resources on the website around topics like getting started with AI, uh, automation health, and predictive customer engagement, and a whole handful of examples about how consortium member companies are approaching AI implementations. One of the most consistent things we're hearing right now is about uh, how organizations that have implemented KCS are uniquely positioned to harness the power of recent AI tools uh, because they have access to content that's accurate, structured, uh, relevant, and in context. We love context. Um, and that's exactly the kind of data that generative AI needs in order to be most effective. If you're interested in hearing uh, in KCS or hearing more about the AI work that the consortium's done this year, we have a couple of additional public virtual events coming up next month, and I will put links in the chat to those things. Uh, and then in March, um, which is right around the corner at this point, we'll be together in person in Atlanta at the annual summit, um, where we're going to explore the convergence between knowledge and people and AI. Uh, registration is open, and we would love to see you there. Today, I'm so pleased to introduce Laurel Portner, who's the Senior Director of Digital Services at F5. Um, she also serves on the consortium's board of directors. Laurel has been helping the consortium community uh, understand the nature and the scope of uh, KCS Evolve Loop work for the last 15 years or so. Uh, and she was named a consortium innovator in 2020, in part for her work on the Measuring Self-Service Success Project. So I'm thrilled she's here to talk us through her experience at F5 um, with, with that topic. I'm also pleased to introduce Rob Rathwell, who's the Vice President of Customer Success at Coveo. Uh, Coveo is a consortium member and also a KCS-aligned vendor. So KCS-aligned tools complement or enable KCS practices. And in this case, uh, Rob and Laurel are gonna talk about how Coveo's AI powered solutions boosted F5's self-service success rate. We are anticipating time for Q&A at the end. In the meantime, please put any questions in the chat. Uh, we are recording this call and you'll receive an email with the recording in the next day or two. So Laurel and Rob, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Um, hi, everybody. I'm hoping that ever, I'm just going to do a quick tech check and make sure that everybody can see uh, a title slide on the screen. Looks Excellent. Good. Okay, I see some thumbs up and some heads nodding. So thanks, Kelly, for the introduction. Um, my name is Rob Rathwell. Uh, I am the Vice President of Customer Success at Caveo. Uh, I've been at Caveo for about a year. Um, I was a Caveo customer before I joined uh, before I joined the company. So I was an end user of the Caveo solution um, in both the service and workplace models. Um, so um, pleased and thrilled that uh, Laurel has uh, joined me today so we can share uh, some of the some of the successes that F5 uh, have seen. And, and really, this is a story about AI in action. So this goes beyond the theoretical, and these are some real-time, tangible, uh, you know, use cases, stories, and value elements um, from, from deploying AI in a real-time solution. So without further ado, uh, I will get into uh, I will get into the presentation, and I would be remiss if I didn't start. Um, with just a little bit about Caveo. As Kelly mentioned, we are a consortium member um, and we've been around for a while. Um, so uh, we are definitely an AI search first self-service platform. Um, and that, that's one of the keys to remember is that um, when you deploy Caveo, it is a single AI platform. Um, 
and we bring AI to every point of experience within the digital journey. Um, we have about 700 enterprise customers, um, and we're a company of about 700 people. Um, we are proudly Canadian, uh, but have a global presence, both of customers uh, as well as employee base. Um, and we've been deploying AI platforms for more than a decade. Um, so obviously with you know, chat GPT and all of the buzz around AI, uh, certainly uh, around the COVID timeline, um, it has become one of the, you know, AI ML is one of the most overused phrases that's been out there for the last three to five years. Um, but we've been at this for a while. Um, we are, uh, you know, proud uh, partners in several forms, including this one, um, and have been recognized as a leading employer as not, ju not just in Canada, but uh, across the globe. And uh, lastly, um, one thing that I always like to mention that makes me a proud Kavayan is uh, our 1% pledge. So we donate 1% of our time and technology and profits um, outside of, uh, of our company, but we have added a fourth element to that. Uh, so we also donate 1% of our equity and that's to help democratize access to knowledge and education around the world, something that we're very proud of. So that's a little bit about Kaveo. And so let me talk a little bit about what does that mean for you? Uh, as I mentioned, we are a search first company. So we think that everything starts with a search. The results of that search are where we start to differentiate. So um, we feel that the future of every interaction is business to person. So we all talk about, are you a B2B company or are you a B2C company? regardless of which category you fit into at that macro level, or even if it's both of those categories, ultimately the future is really about business to person. It's about an individualized relevant experience as Kelly mentioned uh, earlier. Everything is about relevancy and, and an individualized experience. Um, it's about having that spinal ability um, to generate those experiences across every interaction so that it's an intelligent, connected journey and it drives superior business outcomes, not just for you and your business, but for your customer and their business. And lastly, we think that, that the combination of those things brings to you what we call the AI experience advantage. So, whether you've deployed Caveo in a commerce business, website, workplace, or service business, um, we are looking at obviously various potential elements. And, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to Laurel, who is the store, star of this presentation very shortly, who's going to tell you some real-time examples that, that F5 um, has, has realized as part of their partnership with Caveo. But whether you are in a commerce business looking to increase revenue and profitability, um, whether you are in a service business where you're looking at customer satisfaction and optimizing your business and cutting service costs and efficiency and proficiency. If you're in a website business where you're looking for just better engagement digitally across your journey and making sure that your success rate is better through search or whether you're in a workplace business, which is around proficiency and efficiency and self-service. Again, all of that starts with a search. It will bring you all of these outcomes regardless of your use case. And the key here is that it brings a balance, that terribly difficult balance between an outstanding customer experience and your ability to scale and achieve efficient business outcomes. So with that, I wanna very quickly uh, take the opportunity to introduce Laurel Portner, uh, who is the Senior Director of Digital Services at F5. As Kelly mentioned, a board member with the consortium. Um, she is an influential leader in knowledge management and an expert in KCS. Um, she has received the Consor Consortium Innovator Award. Um, proud to say that she's a, a former Kavayan. As a newer Kavayan, um, I still see Laurel's name on a lot of our historical artifacts. And so I learned from her before I even met her. Um, 
and obviously has experience in knowledge, education, training, digital experiences, and more. Um, and with that, I'm thrilled to have her share the F5 story and their journey uh, with Caveo. So with that, Laurel, over to you. All right. Thank you, Rob and Kelly. Very excited to be here and share with you all and uh, excited to also hear your questions um, at the end. So yeah, let's dive right into, first of all, just who is F5? Um, they're, they're a company that, that it's kind of a secret and a lot of people don't know about us, but we are, we are everywhere. We secure and deliver half the world's apps um, and we're committed to bringing a, a better digital world to life. So we've, we were founded in, in 1999. We've got over 6,000 employees. We're headquartered in Seattle. And, um, and so that's, you know, we're, we're a global company um <clears throat> nearly half the the websites in the world are are going through our products e either hardware software or or saas products so it's uh it's an exciting and uh and an interesting world to be in um with with bringing digital and in terms of what what my team does um, is is digital services is focused on the the ownership experience, and so we are are focused on our customers post sales and supporting our um, our support teams, our services teams, and and our our customers and partners. So. So if we can, um, a little bit about the portfolio. Um, so in terms of, I said, hardware and software and, and SaaS. So our big IP is our, our flagship product that we started out with actually uh, in, in the gaming industry and uh, trying to make things go faster. And, um, and so we've got hardware and packaged software under that. And if you build this out, We've got two other two other products families are our Nginx, which is software and SaaS, uh, focused on application delivery and security, and also uh, our newest product family, which is is digital uh, distributed cloud, and uh, that includes our our SaaS delivery and and a platform for the hybrid multi cloud um, environments. So. Um, so I think that's a summary of F5. And then how do we use Coveo? We use Coveo enterprise-wide on all of these different web properties. Um, like I said, uh, my team is, is more focused on my F5, but we work very closely with several of these other sites, um, including our community, which is Dev Central, and our corporate website. Um, and uh, other documentation sites as well. And so it's been great to use Coveo over the last, uh, coming up on six years now, where we've indexed content from across the company and we can bring it to our customers and our, our employees as well um, through the search platform. And uh so that is kind of where we use it, both on the uh, end on the customer side and the employee side. So this may be a familiar story to some of you, where about uh, nine months, twelve months ago, um, the executive leaders came to us and said, "We've got to get in the AI game, right? And we've got to figure out how to launch." Um, some AI tools and figure out what's the what's the best solution. And so um, we knew about Coveo, we knew about um, the roadmap and what was coming. And, um, and so we set out to prove out um, whether we were going to buy something, we were going to build something um, or, or create something. And uh, and I would say that F5 is doing all three. Um, we've got many, many teams across, uh, across F5 that are all trying to do this same thing and look at their, their different um, disciplines and figure out, you know, how do we get to be more effective and optimize and, um, and you know, and, and stay, stay in the, the AI game as well. So, so that was our mission. 
And now, Laurel, yeah, I the 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 build out of this slide, I kind of held back on it on oh, purpose, sure. and okay. we'll 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 certainly revisit this because, okay. um, I mean that in itself is a very daunting mandate, right? <laughs> Go out, um, do you build? Do you buy? Do you do a combination of right. both? But this to me is the kicker. Yes, <laughs> yes, we need it. We need it in ninety days. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And so, uh, so that definitely upped the game. <laughs> Uh, and prioritized uh, quite a few things for us. And it kind of reminds me of uh, Patrick Lancioni's uh, Five Dysfunctions of a, of a Team. And you really learn about your teammates and what you're doing. And uh, you, you basically zero in on the, on the task at hand and the goal. And that's, and that's what we did. So we pulled Lots of people together, and uh, and if you go to the next slide, we'll we'll talk about kind of what our approach is. Oh yes, and failure is not an option. That's the other <laughs> the other part of this. We will have so, something. Uh, we just <laughs> didn't know exactly what it was going to look like, what it was going to help us with, uh, and so so yes, we uh, we definitely had lots of meetings up front trying to understand what are all the use cases, and I'll go into some of the the process of, of what perfect. Like. Excellent. So, so you've got this mission. Um, do you want it fast or do you want it right? So the answer is yes. <laughs> That's um, right. Yes. Yep. And, and oh, and by the way, don't get it wrong. Uh, yeah, failure is wrong. not okay. And we have to have a return. We can't, you know, we can't just put something in place and uh, have it be a sunk cost. Right. So right. it needs right. to provide benefit and value to the company. Um, so let's got it. Focus on all those things. Yes. Yeah. If we were if we were in an actual room together, and I asked for a show of hands in the audience of how many people, you know, insert your use case here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm guessing a lot of hands would go up around the. Uh, yep. Do it. Uh, do it fast. Mm -hmm. Do it now. Do it right, and uh, don't fail. Mm -hmm. So, as Simon Sinek would say, uh, you know, we start with uh, start with the why, and now let's take a look at the what. So Laurel, I mean, this, sure. even this is a, is a big list. Yeah. And this is certainly just a, a very small snippet of, of some of the things that we were looking at across, uh, across the disciplines, like I said, and, and uh, the, the wire uh, graphic is, is kind of how it felt at first trying to figure out, you know, who's doing what there were people who were doing the same thing and, and just, you know, trying to align. And uh, so it took, took a few few days at, or weeks just to do that and then um, and then settling on you know what are the ones we're going to go after what are the ones that we want to to partner with our IT organization and other um, other departments as well to to start to you know figure out what would be the best thing and also the the roadmap so it wasn't just a one and done it was we were looking, both short term, medium term, long term at all these use cases and figuring out what what made sense um, for each of those. Got it. So the next thing that we did was uh, we focused on people. So uh, really finding the scientists The you know, failure is not an option, but it doesn't mean you can't fail. It means that you've got to fail fast and you need to learn from it and move on and figure out what you're going to do about it. So, so those were the people that we focused on with the, the growth mindset and also skills and some of the capabilities that had uh, detailed experience of those use cases. So we, we took people who had taken cases, who had um, played with AI tools um, in the past were comfortable with, you know, some of those, uh, I'm not really sure what this thing does, but let's go see what it can do and gathering that feedback. Um, and so then we wanted to see, you know, how were we going to define our success? So we had to, to create our own scale of, of testing um, very quickly and align. We had a lot of uh, people in the same room and talking it out and walking through some of the different tools and running them through different scenarios and talking about, does this make sense in terms of how we're measuring it? So even the measurement part of it 
uh, took a little bit of time to align and calibrate across, uh, you know, the different teams. So, um, and so one of the things that we we observed as part of this process was, wow, this this sure feels a lot like KCS and and implementing a KCS program, <laughs> and uh, and really it 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 was so akin to that where um, I I think that that is also why we were able to do this so quickly. We, we showed the, the different phases of, of, you know, granted it was, it was much um, quicker than probably most KCS uh, implementations, but again, focusing on let's figure out the adoption, then get the transaction loop of, you know, that motion of testing things, and then, and then take a step back and say, okay, how is this working for us? Let's maybe improve on that and and run it through again. So. Got it. So you've got your mission, you've got your timeline, you've yep. got your mandate, you've found your scientists or your astronauts. Yep. Um, yes. <laughs> and I go, I'm, I'm dating myself, but I'm a big fan of the Apollo missions. And yes. uh, there's only so many astronauts that can fit in that little, you know, that little spaceship That's and right. you've got a, you, you need mission control. You need all kinds of help just like NASA does. So right. how, you know, how, how did you get to that next step of, you know, how you know you're successful? How do you pick the right partners? How do you make sure you have that extended team in the room with you? Well, one of the things that, that we did, and this is, this was some of our, our measurements of, you know, put yourself into the user's shoes. So it wasn't just, um, you know, for customers, it was also for our employees of, okay, I'm getting this answer. Does it make sense? Is it something that I could use in my workflow, right? And then how do I score that? And what are we going to use to to measure the the success? So it wasn't just about accuracy; it was usability, it was um, user sentiment, um, and and something. Could I just copy and paste it, or was it something that I was going to have to tweak it a little bit? So for a lot of you that have used uh, AI tools. It's not something that is, you know, it just magically happens because you put in the the right prompt, correct? So it's it's uh, learning as you go of, okay, you put in that prompt, oh, yours is much different than mine. Why? You're right. And what do we need to do to to make it more consistent? So so here's kind of some of those quality rating definitions of, you know, did we have to completely overhaul the answer or was it something that that really just a minimal amount? And that was that was the goal that, that we were looking at, not to mention cost benefit. And also, you know, is this something that we're going to have to completely revamp our architecture where, where we right. have to, you know, you know, have uh, developers involved that was going to push this out, right, The in terms of timing. So lots of different variables uh, that we we used in, in the measurement of this. Got it. And so here so, is some of the, uh, the, the measurements and our responses from our testing results. Um, I, I also want to point out that this was the final one. So it that it was interesting that we went through several iterations of this and we did some tweaking we we did uh and it was very interesting to look at how we learned through the testing process um people learned how to use the tool right they learned more about what ai does what and how their prompts could influence um the accuracy and um, and what the output was. So just in the matter of, of weeks, it was, it was so interesting uh, to see, you know, the, the results of that. And it, it, it was the people side. It was, I mean, the, the tool also learned as well. And, you know, we, we brought in different sources and different data sets and things like that. But the fascinating thing for me was, was the change in the people just, just in a very short amount of time. So yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, there's that was that was the first kind of big uh, chat GPT AI ML myth, right? Was that oh, people are getting replaced? And yeah, yeah 
Right. And right. and this is really just, and I, I know you're going to talk about it uh, in a little bit with some of the actuals from the F5 experience about, it's not about that at all. It's right. about how people start to get more efficient and proficient and you just optimize where the human interface is. It's the most exciting part for me, yeah. you know, kind of looking into it. Right, exactly. So, um, why don't we go into uh, a bit of a uh, real-time demo? No, I think this is my F5. So yes. I'm going to steer the demo and, and Laurel, you can go ahead and voice it over. Okay. Sounds good. Yes. So this is our ownership platform and this is both a, an unauthenticated and an authenticated experience. And so we've got our our search box that's been there for years uh, with with Coveo and at the top and and just putting in a, a fairly basic common prompt from our customers on on how to upgrade the software and so you can see the the results using the uh, using generative answering and retrieval augmented generation which is super important with this. Uh, because you get the citations. You can see that not only did it give you a generated answer, it also cited its sources. Plus you still see the, the results, the search results below it. So you've got some options. Uh, there's feedback right there. And uh, yes, you can, you can go to myf5.com and, and do some searches on your own. Um, and you, you have that similar search experience, but it's also got a, a generative AI. So we also implemented it internally. We're using it in a, in a few places inside our, our live chat. We use Salesforce. And so you can see we're also, one of the things that we saw that with this is we are using both Einstein and, and Coveo at the same time because we saw value in both of those in different use cases. So that was super interesting to see um, you, you can go across multiple uh, sources on using the left generated answer. You can copy that. And then the, the Einstein recommendations um, are a little bit more embedded in the workflow and they're a little easier with, with single clicks. So those are a couple pros and cons to, to both. And uh, yeah, Salesforce Einstein is the, uh, is their AI, is Salesforce's AI platform. Um, we also use Coveo in our case management screens using the insights panel and we added generative answering onto that as well. And so um, this is just a, a quick view of, of what a generated answer, same type of thing. You've got your citations. If you scroll down, you see the, the search results as well. You can also toggle that on and off. And we see different use cases from our, our support engineers that use um, the generative answering. Um, and there's times when they're just looking for a, a document where they may turn that off. So some flexibility Excellent. here. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, yes. So I know we're going to get uh, into, uh, you know, some of the actual results that you've seen. And I know, uh, I, I think the results slides are a few weeks old now. So that's a lifetime as we've talked about. Right. So I know you've got some updates there too. Right. And I'll just, you know, we've we've learned a lot uh, so far about the Caveo technology, but it's really only one leg of a three legged stool. Uh, as you know, all of this audience knows there's people, there's process and technology. And at Caveo, yes, obviously we are a software vendor. If you look it up, uh, that's the, probably the first thing you will find, um, you know, on Google is that we are an AI vendor. However, we are uh, a partner with our customers and our customers' success is our success. Some of the successes that um, Laurel is gonna share with you at F5, um, we're equally as thrilled about at Caveo. And, you know, as part of that stool, we ultimately focus on on three things at, at Caveo. And that's the first is the adoption of the software. So we've talked about the mission and the mandate and the challenges that F5 had, the timeline, do you want it right or do you want it fast? And the answer is yes. Um, all of those things, even if they all come together, um, the best software in the world is of no value if you can't use it effectively, efficiently, and at scale. 
and it's one of the it's one of the things that we're most happy about with with Laurel and the F five story is it's a shining example of how those things can come together. And when you look at the requirements on paper in the early days, they're extremely daunting. It's a massive challenge. Um, but we're big believers that you can boil the ocean as long as you do it one cup at a time. And if you get those cups in the right order, um, then some of the results we're about to share with you are are, are definitely achievable in, in a very aggressive timeline. Uh, the next thing is about value. Our customers partner with us um, because we are most likely to bring value to their organization. We definitely realize that and we deliver on that trust. It's not something we take for granted. There is no bigger sign of trust than uh, when someone chooses Caveo to partner with them. And it's our job to ensure that we never break that trust. Um, and we will measure it, we'll capture it, and we'll prove it along with you um, to your stakeholders and your customers. And then lastly is the innovation at Caveo. Obviously, AI is a bleeding edge technology right there where, you know, Laurel's going to share some of the actuals with you. And as soon as they become weeks old, um, they're almost stale or obsolete because the technology evolves so quickly. So when you do invest in a partnership with Caveo, you're not just buying software. Um, you're building up, you know, you're establishing a partnership with someone who's going to accompany you um, and join you in your business transformation. And you're also subscribing to our innovation, not just our software. So when you look, go all the way back to that, that mission statement, right? Um, do you build it? Do you buy it? Um, and you got to do it in 90 days. Um, all of these things have to come together on our side to help make sure you succeed. And with that, I want to give it back to Laurel so she can talk about some of the specifics of some of the F5 successes that they've seen both internally and externally with their customers. So Laurel, back over to you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Yes, I completely agree with all of that. And I'll get into that a little bit more. So, so yeah, right off the bat, we saw an improvement in our self-service success rate in terms of um, we did some A-B testing and uh, su super easy to do with the Coveo platform. And um, and we're, we're starting to look at that in more detail as well, like what other uh, tweaks and, and changes can we make uh, to to the platform to, to improve um, self-service success. Um, we're also looking at different ways to measure. And I know Kelly said that we, that, uh, part of my work a few years ago was, was on the, the self-service success, um, measurements project team, um, at the consortium. Um, there's, there's a lot of innovation around this that I see in the coming months <laughs> and years probably. So, um, so I'm, I'm super excited to, to collaborate with, the community uh, on this because I, I think it's it, we're going to do a lot of learning around it. So, but yeah, that was that was super exciting to see. Uh, and again, our our return um, is 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 very fast. It was it was uh, I think it was six months our return on investment. So, um, so the other thing that I wanted to point out too is just. Why do we think this was was so successful? Why do we think that we we got this stood up so quickly? Um, I think that you know what Rob was talking about in terms of how Coveo is in terms of co-creating value uh, with our partners. Um, we absolutely saw that. I mean, I I would not have been able to get this approved quick, so quickly without the help of of our customer success manager. And they're still right in there with us every week, looking, learning, trying to tweak, figuring out how we can improve. Um, but the other part of this is the data, right? It's the content, it's the context and knowledge centered service KCS absolutely em empowers you to be able to leverage, um, to leverage that with these large language models. And so we started out um, in 2018 with um, with Coveo. We were early in our KCS journey, and we've been able to, um, you know, improve the 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 landscape of the issues coming into our assisted support channel into a higher percentage of new issues, and more are being solved on through self service lower touch channels. And uh, and so I think that. 
we have doubled the size uh and now i think it's that's that's actually a year old we doubled the size of our knowledge base we're now over 40,000 articles so we've got a lot of rich uh data to work with with context to help with um the the ai and machine learning um so and let's go to the next slide to talk about what is next. Yeah, you've, uh, you know, you've, to stick with that Apollo analogy, you've been to the moon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so what's next? Do you colonize the moon? Do you go to Mars? What's <laughs> what, what's next for X F5? Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, somebody asked about the change management, and I think that you don't have a lot of time for change management if you have to implement something in 90 days. So, yeah. um, so we, we definitely are focused on that and notice that it's, uh, it, it definitely impacts your, your metrics, your success. Uh, when you find out how people are using the product and help them use it better. Um, and Coveo is helping us do that. We've got our, our customer success manager did some shadow sessions with users to, to identify um, areas where we can do some training, where we can gather feedback. Um, plus, we've also been partnering with the, the development team and giving them feedback on the product and uh, their latest release. Uh, I believe it doubled the, the answer rate. Um, just with that feedback. Uh, so we went, and this is some kind of later uh, measurements that we don't have on the slides, but our answer rate was about 25% when we first um, launched and now it's it's 50%. So, so that was uh, super impressive to see that now 50% of the searches that are happening are getting a generated answer. And <clears throat> again, focused on, on the people, and also just uh, having more conversations about, you know, the the myths, dispelling the myths and the the resistance and all these questions because it's very scary. Um, and uh, it's 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 like, does this sound familiar? Yes, it's very familiar to anyone who's implemented a, you know, knowledge management, you know, program, KCS program, or anything that is involves change, um, and. I think that one of the things that I want to highlight on here that we have found is, um, you know, AI, AI is is not pixie dust. And uh, to take from a, a friend of the consortium, and uh, it's it needs context, content, it needs data, and in order to get that, what we have found the the, the people who are doing the work, they've got to get the tacit knowledge documented somehow so that it can be fed into the large language models, pure and simple. And uh, however you wanna do that, we're focused on documenting cases um, and also knowledge creation. Those are, those are the two main things, but there's lots and lots of different ways um, to capture what you learn, what you know, so that it can be then reused by, by AI. Excellent. So with that, I think it actually brings us to our formal Q&A session there. Uh, I think we've answered a couple questions in the chat, um, mm -hmm. but uh, just looking through it, why don't we just open it up and uh, see if there's anything we haven't answered in the chat or if, if anyone wants to ask us anything in real time. If you want to stop sharing, Rob. Oh, I can. Yeah, of can. course. Sorry. Um, no, that's great. I was just going to sort of add to the, in terms of the the change management piece, right? We've talked about how KCS really sets up um, organizations to be successful with AI because it gives them a practice around how to deal with that information and the data that the AI needs. But I think, Laurel, what I heard you say also was perhaps your your years long KCS practice has also given you some the change management tools yes. to address 
sort of the um, any the objections that come up, right? And the <laughs> you it it provides practice both in capturing con capturing instruction content and in managing the change around. Right. Um, Absolutely, what this requires. I mean we've got a robust coaching program, um, and we are leveraging it. Uh, to the hilt on this <laughs> and making sure that uh, we, our coaches are the, are kind of the, the spokespeople and, and the, you know, how we're getting some of this and, and also our feedback mechanism, you know, understanding what's hard, what, what's hard about this, you know, where's, where does some of that re resistance come from um, in terms of using the tools? And, uh, and I think that, you know, that has really helped us um, and is going to help us continue to focus on improving this. Um, I I just have to, I, I read a, an article last night and I just thought it was interesting where it was a study of doctors that are using chat GPT and they found that, that chat GPT um, diagnosed problems better. And the, and the reason was because the doctors didn't know how to prompt and and so if you just fed an entire case, um, you know, of chart notes and all this data, the diagnosis from the tool was actually better because the human was trying to prompt and put in words that that did, that it you know didn't do as well. So I just thought that was super interesting. Where you know once we get some of this prompting, and we've actually done some um, we've created knowledge base articles for our customers and for our employees to help them learn how to use AI because it's very different than search there you know it's it doesn't it doesn't work the same and so you can't just put in a few key words like you're used to and uh, it's not going to give you the results that you need so super interesting on that That's that's so funny. It makes me think about like, you know, we kind of joke about you have to teach people how to search inside um, right knowledge bases because we don't yeah. have the volume to do what Google can do and answer right. questions with a word and a half. And this is yeah. like that times a million in terms yeah. of like, give give me all the information. All like, the information. Yeah. just keep typing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. I know. More <laughs> context, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marie had a question about uh, monitoring tools to measure how well I think the um, the generated the generated solution is doing. Um, and yes, it, I, Coveo has extensive user analytics that we that we use um, all the time, um, and looking at click through rates and answer rates and uh, one one was that that uh, I really like um, that we're starting to to measure and, and promote is the number of searches by a user and we're starting to see that go down um, for for each session and so that is a, you know hard data on it's reducing time for your users you not you're not having to put in as many, you know, when an answer is generated, there's about half the number of, of, of searches, whereas um, compared to one where an answer wasn't generated. So <clears throat> you're not having to read through every document in your search results, you've got a summary right there. And again, it's, it's you know, based on your prompt and your use case and all those, all those wonderful things. But on average, that's, that's one of the, the metrics that we, you're looking at yeah i'll i'll just add to that as well and mm -hmm. i am uh i am probably the least technical person on this call so i don't want to get out of my depth um but one of the things that uh, we also ensure and to way oversimplify it is at caveo we have ai for the ai so it is preventing hallucinations and and uh false responses or, or non-relevant responses. So that actually in our solution at this point, um, and, and Laurel, you can keep me honest here, but that's not really the concern. So one of the other measurements that we keep very close track of is if there's no response. So mm -hmm. if, a, if a query doesn't yield a response, that's problematic. When you're, in the, when you're indexing 40,000 documents, right. there should be a response somewhere. So that's another one of the indicators we use through the testing phase. We'll make sure that the responses are relevant 
and that they're not reaching out to sources that they shouldn't be or anything like that. But ultimately, once you're deployed and live, um, every query should get a response if we've indexed the content properly. So that's one of the other elements that we monitor very closely. Yeah, and I just saw a question flash that we are grounding um, the the LLM in in our knowledge base. Um, so that's that's part of the the rag and vector database that that is part of the the plumbing <laughs> behind the scenes. <clears throat> so is it also and, in the historical cases? Yeah, internal. Um, we we are using cases as well. Yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kevin asks, how can we use the AI-powered system to foster a culture of sharing and collaboration within our organization, uh, encouraging employees to contribute their expertise and experiences? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a very good. So, I mean, it, it's kind of uh, something that the, we hear at the consortium. It's it's show, show them the value that they're creating. Um, and that's something that that we are very um, cognizant of, and also intentional. Every every time we have a, a a town hall, we're showing people the value that they created in the the content um, that they have published, not just to customers on self service, but also reuse. Uh, and what's what's happening um, internally and sharing with their with their coworkers. So, I think that that is key. Uh, another another area that we have indexed is our collaboration tools, um, and that is starting to provide some interesting you know results and feedback. Where just a, a conversation in Slack or Teams or whatever you use. Um, and if you're, you know, doing intelligent swarming, if you can index that and search, um, that is providing value. So again, bringing, bringing people, and then you see who the people are so that you can connect the people to other people when you have a, a new issue that you're not, um, sure about, and there's no content out there and you've got to create it. So. Could you share insights on the build versus buy dilemma? Oh, something just jumped. Hang oh, on. Yeah. Uh, every organization faces this challenge. Are there any use cases for choosing build? Oh, yes, absolutely. There are. Um, and in fact, we, we're we just uh, looking at one um, that some of our engineers had, had built um, <clears throat> that it's just a, a nuanced, you know, use case that somebody saw a need for, and uh, the the issue that you're that you're looking at is operationalizing it and and productizing it, right? So with Coveo, it's out of the box. It's a uh, you know, it's it's you know, implement it, figure out what sources you're gonna you're gonna index, and essentially turn it on. I mean, it's uh, but you have to go to the website, you have to go to a particular area of your CRM system or whatever it is. Um, and it may not be exactly in the right spot that you need it, right? Whereas building something to either call an API and put it directly into a workflow um, or something like that, then, or maybe it's, it's um, analysis uh, about KCS, because that's another area that we're looking at where we're we're using LLMs to the massive amounts of data that you get in support and services. Uh, you know, what do we do with this and what insights can we gain? Um, so that's that's another area where you would use, um, you know, a build versus maybe a buy. So. Yeah, I'll just I'll expand on that and this coming from the vendor. Right. So um, but. Um, we don't even look at it as a build versus buy. It's what should you build versus what should you buy? Because mm -hmm. it's a combination of both, as Laurel yeah. said. Um, and the key for us, and remember, I was a customer uh, of Caveo's um, before I joined the company. It's, it's not necessarily about the build in the moment. Now, I would say 
when you get that when you get that 90 day mandate it's pretty tough to build and deploy so you got to you know there's some advantages there um but the build dilemma really hits you when you get into main, maintenance and scalability and and that right. would be that would be what i would look at the most there are certainly some elements that you can and should build um as opposed to buy but at a certain point they might have a shelf life um so yeah. um it's about what do you want your core competency to be? Do you want it to be about maintaining, you know, AI elements of your solution? Um, as you scale and have to maintain, that's where the consideration comes in from my perspective. But it's certainly, I agree 100%. There are absolutely elements of build and elements of buy that should be considered in every decision as you move forward in the journey. Yeah, and I'll add one more thing, which is, um, the ability to A-B test was absolutely a requirement for us to get funding. Um, and so mm -hmm. we, and sometimes you actually have to build the A-B test <laughs> and that yeah. takes more time. So this was, again, already baked into the platform. It You literally just turn it on and you had an A-B test in 28 days and could could measure. And so... Um, so that was that was the other key key element of that in order to get funding for for the investment. So. I would love to introduce and say hello to Kendall Brenizi, who works with Laurel at F five and is doing a lot of work in the chat answering Hi, questions. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall, type in about there... 60 to 80 words per minute, depending on how much yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Are there questions um, that could use a little more attention from our friends, Laurel and Rob, that you have there been? There is. There's one in particular. Uh, let me see if I can find it from BJ Watkins. Um, asking around, what metrics do we use to track self-serve success rate? Um, so Laurel, would you be up for going a little bit deeper into that, uh, that particular number that you showed? Yeah. And you, you jump in too, <laughs> because, um, cause we, we are using Coveo analytics, but we also use Adobe analytics. Um, and so we, we want to see, uh, the, where everyone's coming from. So you saw the the eight or so web properties um, that, that we're using Coveo. We can see where people, kind of that click stream of, of where users are coming and going. Um, but Adobe also allows us to see that where, especially when it's referred by a search engine um, and and where they're where they're going after that. Um, uh, Adobe is is something that we're looking at and in terms of our self-service success, we we use um, a measurement which is article exit. So if you land on a, an answer, uh, and and then that was your last event, that is a self-service success. Um, and then we also are using feedback to triangulate. Um, so we've got we've got several different surveys on the site, and also in the generative answering with the thumbs up, thumbs down. So. Did I miss anything, Kendall? Um, just one other piece is uh, that's after we've excluded things like bot traffic and bot yes. behaviors. Um, if any of you aren't looking at bot behaviors, we would definitely recommend doing so, considering there is a population of your viewer base to your portals that are probably not human. Uh, but yeah, after excluding bots. Right. It's we keep looking for that one magic measurement and it just no. doesn't exist uh, yeah. in terms of... <laughs> <laughs> That's I right. wish there were I wish there were a single number or a single measurement we could use, but yeah. we have to make some assumptions about what's happening. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. Any other last minute questions here? I think we have time for one more. Or anything else, Kendall, we should poke at from the chat. Um, there was a question, um, I think from, where did it go? I lost it. It was around um, providing a framework for um, how we went about achieving this. Um, and this is a really long question. In fact, we could probably do an entire hour just mm -hmm. on this, um, if not two or three. Uh, so forgive me that I might not be answering this person's question, but 
um, when it came to testing, what we did was we targeted our testing against known issues. Um, that was our framework, if you will, because we knew that this particular use case we were exploring wasn't to help solve or, or uh, accelerate new issues. It was to really target known. So what we did is we handpicked the top known issues, repetitive, annoying ones that we would see in the support organization and tested the top 100 of those. Um, but what we also did to try to remove human bias, we um, distributed that across many testers. So just because a um, test was run once didn't mean we were done. We would actually run it two or three times with two or three different people, each with their own kind of unique prompting to try to reduce or aggregate that human bias in testing. Um, I don't know if that answers the question for the one individual. Yeah, and I would, I can't remember what slide it was, but there was, when I was looking at all the different um, measurements for success, there was one, we partner with our, our IT organization and they, um, they've got a business transformation office um, that has built out uh, a framework um, with a lot of our input <laughs> um, as we have we were doing this. So I mean, it's very new and it, and we're iterating on it. Um, but there's also a major decision framework or MDF score that had some of those other things like the architecture and you know the build versus buy and 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 things like that. So they really helped uh, define that piece of it um, as they should from a from a platform tool perspective for for the systems of the company so yeah very and as you said Kendall we could probably do an hour um, mm -hmm. just on just on some of these metrics and and Kelly to your point there is there's no silver bullet here there's mm -hmm. not that one perfect metric but and we will definitely one of the questions was will we share out the slide deck and we can definitely do that but I know one of the things that uh, F5 also touched on that can be actually a deceiving metric if you don't have the context is very similar to the build versus buy is the known versus new, right? So as, mm -hmm. as known issues become more and more self-solved, um, you can focus on the new issues um, to start to build that knowledge base. And it can start to look like your time to resolution is going up. It can start to look, that's not the case at all. That's actually the optimization that you want um, so that you can continue to scale over time. So mm -hmm. every one of the metrics we talk about has context to your business and where you are in your journey. Absolutely. So that, I mean, that is definitely a whole, a whole nother, uh, a whole nother call. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, and getting ready for those metrics to move in the wrong direction Okay. Sometimes it's very helpful to set some executive expectation around that, that that is actually an indicator of success. Our yeah. humans are now working on the new stuff. We're not reinventing the wheel over and over. So yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone who has joined us. Uh, questions that we did not get to, we will reply to afterwards. Um, thank you so much, Laurel and Rob, for your time and for sharing your story. Uh, I hope to see everybody again at another consortium event soon. Thank Have you a great day. Have a great Thanks rest for of your day. Us. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. everybody.